Uh, what I'm going to do for the beginning of our workshop, uh, those of you who might have missed it, I want to replay the intro sequence to our Apples to Oranges game, get you in the mood and the spirit. What is Everyday Heroes? Uh, what is it all about? What, what are the themes I can expect? Not just in the specific story that I'm telling with community members, uh, but overall. So let's hop back to the lobby. I'm going to play this. Uh, it's just a couple minutes. It's a fun little intro like you'd get in, a, in a, a movie or a TV show. And when we come back, I'll go over how we're going to build our next character. And there we go. I hope that you enjoyed it. That does give a sense of the explosions that you might find. Uh, because Everyday Heroes is about recreating the action adventure that you, you would find in a fantasy setting in Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, especially as this is a 5e compatible system. Though the concept is it's set in the modern world. Now, whatever that might mean is modern 1920s, 1980s, uh, the 3020s. You, you can adjust uh, your experience as you would like. And uh, so getting an understanding of that shift can be difficult despite the rules essentially being the same. And a project like this, and our character creation, is meant to help ease that understanding. To see exactly what the differences are uh, between the systems. 
and how compatible or incompatible you might find them to be. And ultimately, we're going to finish making a team of four heroes that we're going to use to create an adventure in next week's series of workshops. We're basing the character creation off of our standard formula that it's been tweaked over the years, but ever since really year one, broadcast one all those years ago, this has really been the bread and butter of the workshop, creating compelling characters in order to tell fantastic stories. Not min-maxing. We, we're not getting into the crunch of how to build uh, some sort of optimal warlock or things along those lines. Plenty of videos, plenty of forums about that. What I've found is that there's not a lot of conversation around, well, creating an everyday hero, a non-optimal character that is still fun to play, easy to play, because you don't have to work around, oh, it's all these weaknesses and I don't feel advanced enough or whatever, because you understand the character. This is a character that can exist because this is a character that's a lot like us. We have our flaws. We have our shortcomings. Hi, Lucius, and hi, uh, Demon Quiller. I'm glad that you're here. We are going to begin our character workshop. Now, uh, I also do have random.org open so that if I need to do some dice generation, uh, I can uh, I can be sure to do that as well. Though DQ and Lucius, uh, I am happy to have you here to roll some dice. If you want a particular aspect of this third character, you're welcome to lock it in with some channel points. But why don't we get this going? I have a blank character sheet, and I have our methodology open so that we get to know who the character is first before we worry about the mechanics, the, uh, you know, the, the gimme gimmies, the, well, how hard do I kill the enemy? Well, do we always want to kill the enemy? Uh, maybe, maybe not, but why would we want to kill enemies? Let's understand what compels our character. So, we're going to get, uh, uh, Metropolis Fanfare, this, this will be good. Now, if, if you all are hearing the AC rattle, please let me know. I need to pass along a note of concern uh, to the building owner if this is being distracting on stream. Um, and if the background music's too loud, that's on me. Uh, so, pl yeah, yeah, DQ. Uh, in fact, uh, DQ, get us going. I would like you to roll a percentile in chat, exclamation point 1D100 to get us going. We're starting here and we're working down through the different aspects. 28, all right, so we have a female character. We have two male characters. We have a female character. Now you did spend the points to roll for the background. And the background here uh, is going to be, uh, uh, oh, so ah, we already rolled a 1D100. Uh, so you're on cooldown for that. Uh, tell you what, let's do... How can we do this? Um... Well, there's 25 of them. One oh one percentile. What, what do you mean, uh, DQ? I suppose what we could do because there's twenty five of them, this could be a uh, we could treat it like our our virtues. Uh, except we would uh, we would accept a 13 uh, instead of just a d12. So let's do this. Um, DQ, uh, type exclamation point 1d4 because you might still be on the percentile cooldown. One 
one. All right, so we have uh, we have odds. Now roll one d twelve, and if it's one through twelve, we'll take that as the number. If it's thirteen, you get to choose. All right, so you get to pick a number one through twelve, or just manually pick from the first twelve uh, backgrounds that might be available if you have the book to look at. Otherwise, if you want to just re-roll, type exclamation point 2d12, and we'll take the first uh, seven. Okay. Got it. Our background is seven. Now, Lucius, if you're still here, uh, I would like you to give me a 1d3 roll and then a 1d10 roll. All right, so we're in the first column. And so this will be numbers 1 through 10. Motivation number 9. Let's scroll down here. Motivation 9. Attachments. Uh, now, if there's anyone else who is watching and would like to roll, let me know. Uh, I will roll 1d12 in chat. 8. 8. Next up, beliefs. Uh, we'll keep going round robin until there's another person up here that would like to roll. So DQ, I would like to give. Uh, I would like you to give me a one D three roll. Ah, two. All right, I want you to roll 1d4 now, please. Three. Okay. We and we'll go in and explore what all this means. Let's lock it in first before we get too far. Hey, uh, hey, Gregor, good to see you. Craigar, what do we see ourselves as, uh, what is our role in society? Uh, give me a 2d20 roll, and we'll take the first, uh, the first number between, uh, 1 and, uh, 16. Alright, so it's either between 1 or 17, and we're gonna take the 1. Oh my gosh! I, I think we have, uh... We have a very interesting it writes itself phenomenon going here and I'll show you what I mean when we get to that point everyone. <laughs> All right. Next up our virtues. Uh Lucius. Again, if there's anyone else out there that would like to roll, let me know, but let's go back around to Lucius. I need a 1d4 roll, please. Three, so we have odds. Now I need a 1d12. So this will be in the first 12 of the 24 virtues. Nine. Isn't this what we also got for motivation? Interesting. Next up, it appears that we have a flaw. Who, who would have thought who would dare? Uh, let's come around to Demon Quiller giving us a 1d20 roll to determine the flaw of this character. DQ, you out there? Demon Quiller? Alright, we lost him. I will roll 1d20. Stops on a 13. And a quirk. Kragar, 1d4 please. Which kind of quirk do we have?
three. Now, for Ancestry, I don't really know what our setting is. Is it a, a real world? Is it fantasy? So I'm not worried about that right now for this character. But that is something to consider. All right, it is now time to determine the class of our character. And in this system, your class is broken up into two, uh, two rails upon which you uh, will guide your character forward. Is there someone out there that hasn't yet rolled and would like to roll for this? No, you're fine, DQ. We, we moved ahead. You're okay. All right, so Craigar is lagging. DQ is uh, AFK. Uh, Lucius, if you're still here, uh, I suppose you could roll for this then. Uh, so Lucius, give me a 1d6 roll, please. Six. We have another. Uh, we have another charming character. Uh, so this is a charisma-based character. That means that uh, we have four classes to choose from in this category. Lucius, give me a 1d4 roll. Are we going to get another duelist with a 1? No, 5. All right, Lucius, you get to choose. Either you can re-roll a d4, and in that case you'll want to use the 2d4 command, or... You can choose uh, from among a... Uh, let me get this open here. Let's close this. And we'll close this. So in the Charming Heroes, we have a Duelist, an Icon, a Leader... Or a manipulator. You can choose by rolling a 5 on a d4, or you can re-roll. Do you want a manipulator, leader, icon, or duelist, or would you like to re-roll with a 2d4 command? Lucius, your options are Duelist, Icon, Leader. Okay, so you're rolling. All right, the first number is one, so we're going to have a second Duelist. All right, let's move ahead. Now it's time to determine our profession. Uh, is there someone else out there that can roll? Otherwise, I will I will do so. Blue Joy, one D three, please. One now one uh, one D ten. So we're in the first column. 11, you get to choose a number between 1 and 10, or if you want to leave it for luck, roll 2d10 and we'll take the first number that's not an 11. Okay. 
the first, uh, all right, four. All right, so we are number four. And we know that we're a level six character. All right, uh, DQ. 1D100, please. Do we have another young adult? Are we making the uh, the team of, of anime protagonists? Or the teenagers with attitude, like a Power Rangers? Lands on a 10, and we absolutely are. Despite all odds, we are creating another young adult for our team. Uh, Demon Quiller, roll 1D6, please. Another 16-year-old, okay. So we come down here. We're a young adult. We are 16. All right. Uh, I want you... Uh, uh, I want you to roll 2d10. And then Blue Joy, I want you to roll 2d4 if you're still hanging out. All right, DQ is going AFK again. Blue Joy, you might be off cooldown for the 2d10. I would like you to give me another 2d10 roll, please. We're adding five inches, uh, so we have another four foot 13, uh, another uh, four foot 13 inch character. And we're gonna take that five and multiply it by the three. That's 15 pounds, so we our weight's 125. There we go. All right, now we're going to put away our spoiler sheet here, or our, uh, whatever, our, our generator. Hi, Belladonna. And let's meet our character. We're gonna begin with the background. Pardon. <clears throat> and the background that was generated was number... Number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, we have an immigrant. You straddle the line between two cultures, that of your native country and that of your new home. Despite challenges, you are stronger for your experiences. Ability score increase. Increase your con or wisdom by one. All right, so we're going to say I won or I won. So we get our choice to put a plus one in one of these, and that's going to enhance ultimately where we put our ability scores. But I want to save that for the end. I, I want to learn who our character is first. Uh, choose an additional language. So languages, uh, we didn't go over languages for the other characters. Maybe we can talk about that tonight, but we will get an additional language. Skill proficiencies, choose one from endurance, insight, and streetwise. Uh, so we're going to say I won in Streetwise, Endurance, and Insight. Iconic Equipment, a flag from your swearing-in ceremony.
special feature, one of us. You gain advantage on charisma checks when attempting to influence members of the same immigrant culture. Excellent. Next up is our profession. And the profession that we generated is number four. Academia, agriculture, athletics, and counseling. All right, so we are in counseling. Apparently I cannot uh, type the full word here. All right, well, we're counseling. You work as a therapist, I mean, uh, helping people cope with the emotional stresses of life. Your deep understanding of the human psyche gives you insight into people's motives and emotions. So maybe we're a behavioral therapist, crisis counselor, marriage counselor, or a psychologist. Um, increase your wisdom and one other ability score of your choice by one. So wisdom and then one other. Let's go back to our character sheet. So wisdom, uh, so we will get... Uh, C1 and then plus one other. Skill proficiencies, insight, persuasion, and social sciences. So for sure we get insight. We get social sciences. And we also get persuasion. Iconic equipment, professional attire, a pencil and notepad, a copy of the DSM. Mind you, we're 16, but we're, we're the person people in our group go to talk to, right? Uh, we're the, uh, who is it in Peanuts, Lucy? Who has the little, uh, the, the, the psychology booth that Charlie Brown listens to? Our wealth level is three. Special feature. Crisis management. You have advantage on charisma persuasion checks made to calm someone down or to persuade someone against violent action. All right, now to help us determine, um, well, we're gonna get some more, uh, we're gonna get some more skills from being a charming character. Yeah, a, a camp counselor? Oh yeah, we might be a camp counselor uh, or something similar anyway, yeah. Like someone's, someone's gotta be the mature one in the group of, uh, of neighborhood kids here going on adventures. Uh, and so it's going to be her. <laughs> um, let's go over to... Ba -ba -bum, ba -da -ba. We're not a tough hero. We're not a smart hero. We are...
We're a charming hero. And we're level 6. So we have D8. We have 6 D8 hit dice. Our hit points at first level are 8 plus con. Plus our other 5 levels are going to be... Uh, uh, half of eight is four plus one, so we have five plus con. That is going to be how we calculate our total hit points. At level six, our proficiency bonus is three, and our defense bonus is plus two. We get five influence dice that are D8s and four, we get four tricks. So influence is five D8 and then we get four tricks. Could I not get a influence five? Oh, I can put it there. There we go. And then here's our plans and tricks. Our trick DC of, but well, we'll calculate it. One, two, three, four. Uh, and sees Demir in a stolen car. Hey, let's talk about your home life. <laughs> Is it, was that really necessary? Concern. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Right up there. there there's our Nora Y. That's our concern face. Now, being a charming hero, we can choose either charisma or dexterity for our defense. Let's go to talents and feats. Uh, we start out with two influence dice, which are D6s, and influence die is expended when it is rolled. You regain all of your expended influence dice when you finish a short or long rest. You gain additional influence dice as you gain levels, as shown in the Charming Hero table. And so we have five influence dice, which are D8s. We'll modify that for the uh, for us having leveled up. Tricks. You learn two tricks chosen from your class's list of tricks. You learn additional tricks as you gain levels, as shown in the Charming Hero table. Uh, whenever you gain a level, you can replace one trick you know with another from your class list. You can only use one trick during a single attack, saving throw, or ability check. We're going to copy the rest of this, and we'll go over it as we drop it into our character. The effect of each trick, as well as the action you must take to enact it, is included in the trick's individual description. If a trick calls for a saving throw, it's 8 plus charisma plus proficiency. That should sound very familiar to Dungeons & Dragons. Um... So, charm level two.
bum, ba bum, ba bum. Formatting this to make it a little easier for everyone to read. Um, I can... I can also go over things. This is part of the fun and flexibility of the system as well. At your even levels, you get to get uh, two minor feats or one major feat. And we'll go over what, what that will be for our character uh, when we get there. Charm, when you make a charisma check after rolling but before determining the result, you can roll an influence die and add it to your result. Uh, two minor feats or one major feat at levels 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. You can choose two minor feats. All right, so in this case, we're going to go level two. Level four, what did we choose? And then level six, uh, as that is the level at which we're generating our characters. And then we have improved influence. Your influence dice increases by one. Uh, so really we can put, uh, it, we could just put improved influence and we'll put level one slash five and that will free up some space down here uh, for, more, uh, for more things. In fact, we could probably just delete a lot of this uh, as it's a redundant to what's elsewhere, but you can see it all uh, laid out. Now, uh, from Lucius's roll, we are going for another duelist. Our saving throws are going to be Dexterity and Charisma. Skills, choose two from Acrobatics, Athletics. All right, so let's go over here. So we're going to say uh, D2 to indicate that we can choose. It was Acrobatics, Athletics, Deception, Endurance, Intimidation, Deception, Endurance, Intimidation, and Performance. Equipment, basic and historical. So we'll fill those dots in. We get a duelist pack and a rapier. In this case, maybe a very long pen. Uh, the, the pen is mightier than the sword. Then we have our duelist talents. And we are going to get these. Let's copy them over here. Precision level one while wielding a finesse weapon You can roll one additional weapon damage die when determining the damage for a melee attack This does not apply to attacks you make as a bonus action In addition while wielding a weapon with the finesse property Your defense bonus is increased by one. You know what? That is something that I believe we didn't do for our other duelist. So our defense is 17 as long as we're wielding a uh, our, our poking stick, uh, our rapier from that character. On guard, you can add your Charisma modifier to your initiative rolls. And advanced combat training, once during your turn, when you take the attack action, you can make two attacks as part of that action. Uh, 
All right, because we have Trick DC up here, uh, I'm going to put 8 plus Charisma uh, plus 3, which is our proficiency bonus. That's going to free up a lot of space here. Let's also save some space here. We already know that we have four, so we have tricks, so... We'll just keep the note that whenever you gain a level, you can replace one, since that's more of a unique note. And that is helping us to uh, free up a little bit more space, I believe. And we know we already have additional influence, so we'll, we'll, we'll also delete that. Crisis management, then we have improved influence, then we have tricks, then we have charm. Uh, it was we come down here. I, I mean, we'll we'll decide if we want feats or ability score bumps, but then we'll get precision, on guard, and advanced combat training. Craigar. <laughs> All right, we have the basics. Now we can come over to, well, let's see, we know our speed is 30. Now we can start making some decisions about our character. For uh, this character, dexterity and charisma are both going to be important. Now we have someone who really um, is trying to talk people down from violence. And it seems like our other character would almost be an understudy uh, because we did get uh, someone who is uh, investigative, uh, who's you know trying to survive, has taken many tricks uh, in order to not just destroy people. Um, but let's read a little bit more about our character to help us decide where we should put our numbers and lock in our skills. Because as we come here to our motivations, our motivation was nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Friendship. You will do anything for your friends and live for their companionship. And you are prompted to think a little bit more beyond just that. And we can, but let's lock in what the idea is first. Our attachment is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A pet. Many people have a strong bond with their pets or other animals they care for, sometimes as as much or more than their uh, than their human attachments. So there is a particular pet. 
uh, to which we have an attachment. Now, whether or not that is uh, a combat pet, there is a way that we could bring that uh, we can bring that aboard onto our character uh, mechanically. Otherwise, it's fine just having a pet. Beliefs. Two is philosophical. One was religious, two is philosophical, three was proverbs. We had two, three. Metaphysics, um, epistemology, or axiology. What is good and what is bad? Philosophical axiology, what is good and what is bad. So we're trying to determine the nature of people. You know, what really is, uh, what really does make uh, a boy the goodest or a bad boy, if we're giving ear scritches or nose boobs. Our role in society, like the other two, this was also rolled of all of the possibilities as an artist. So we do believe that what we're doing is an art. It is contributing to society by by making this a, uh, but perhaps by leaving people in a better state than we found them, or we don't see our social sciences as a science. We see it as an art something to interpret. But this is a very interesting and consistent uh, line that's running through our characters. Next up is our virtue, and we had virtue number nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Our virtue is that we are experienced. We've been through a lot. Uh, you know, through our process of immigrating from one country to another, or if this is, um, whatever, an isekai environment or a modern fantasy, urban fantasy, um, did we come from an elven kingdom to settle in a dwarven kingdom? Uh, we we feel though that even though we're only 16, or again, if we want to if you want to deal with fantasy races or biological equivalents or whatever, that's fine. Uh, translate that how you want. But we do have, uh, we do feel we're experienced for our short amount of years, for the things that we've seen, for the things that we have experienced. Our flaw is number 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, but we are lazy. There's so much good you can do with the world, but you are lazy. Why are we tired? Or do we, just because we understand how people work, Perhaps doesn't mean that we feel the need to run around and try and change the world. Maybe maybe we believe people who really want to feel better uh, or to be our friend or something will come to us instead. That could be that, that could be part of the the personality. And our quirk three instead of a quirky mannerism speech, we have a quirky limitation. Uh, we refuse to kill anyone on the weekends. You won't go outside without your lucky hat. You never drink alcohol during a full moon, or you can't stand the sound of squeaky toys. We have some sort of a quirky limitation. Where do we draw the line? Uh, is it, uh, you know, bugs and snakes like Indiana Jones? Uh, is it, uh, we don't like the taste of, uh, I don't know, we can't stand orange juice with pulp or crunchy peanut butter? Um, what, uh, what might be a quirky, uh, a limitation to us that is a quirk? Oop. Hold on.
uh, a friend is in the hospital, so just uh, talking about uh, things. So, um, so there's our limitation. So, with those as our considerations, where do we want to put our skills, and especially where do we want to put our ability scores? This part of our character, our persona, or in in traditional five e, our background. I love starting with that because that will dictate everything else about the character. We know that regardless of our scores, this is who we're dealing with on a consistent basis. As the player piloting the character, pardon me, as the player piloting the character or as a character that's living in this world every day. So we believe in friendship. We're attached to a pet. Um, we are asking ourselves what is good and bad. Um, yeah, I, I can let you know about it, Belladonna. It's not an emergency. Um, um, there's something, there's some sort of quirky limitation uh, to us. We value our experience, our worldly experience, though we are lazy and um, and uh, we see ourselves and what we do as an artist. Now, if we're lazy, we're, I would say that we're, we're not going to take a lot of physical skills, and our defense bonus is most likely going to be, with that nod in the face, probably through our looks. We're, we're not going to be too physical. We're, we're going to be more of, a, uh, more of a mental character. Uh, it doesn't mean that we can't poke people uh, if they get close, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, but we're probably not going out of our way with extra skills beyond the fact that we can, uh, you know, use a weapon if it really comes to it. Uh, that is, that is how I'm leaning. And we would want to go, uh, more heavy into our charisma. So with our options, I'm thinking from Immigrant, we do have insight already, if we take uh, Immigrant Insight that will give us expertise, or we could go down here and get Streetwise. Are we Streetwise, though? Because that would that would mean going out and about. And I, if she's lazy, um, then maybe she's not out on the street talking with people. She doesn't... She knows she can, she can talk about humanity, but maybe more on a one-on-one -on -one basis, rather than uh, being around a lot of other people. In this case, I, I think I would give her expertise and insight, and we'll just delete these here. Next up, we get to choose... Uh, oh yeah, in, in an endurance. Uh, I, I don't think she she would have that as a, uh, as a lazy person. Alright. Now we get to choose two skills. Uh, acrobatics and athletics are, I think we're going to take those off. Those are very physical. Deception, endurance, so we'll take off endurance, intimidation, performance. Let's see. Friendship, do anything for your friends and live for their companionship. I'm leaning persuasion and intimidation because if she can step up and scare someone away, then uh, I think that would be better than trying to deceive people, especially because she wants, she craves other people's attention. She doesn't want a reputation for being deceptive. So from our personality, I think we're going to go intimidation and performance. Hey, GMV. All right, those are the skills that we have. Now, let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look at our... Um, uh, at our scores. I think for sure we're going to put the 15 in Charisma. She's going to be much more about that. Now, dexterity... 
is important, not to defense, because we can defend ourselves off of charisma. Um, perhaps if we do need to act quickly or to do something in a combat situation, we have enough to get by. So we'll drop our 14 there and not worry too much further. But I think as, if she's experienced, if she has all of this, uh, we're, we're going to make much more of a, uh, a mental character here. So let's go with... 15, 14, 13, although she's, you know what, let's go 13, 12, 10, Eight. I think that is going to be a good spread. 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. Given who she is and what we know about her. That means after our initial character creation, uh, we can choose to bump Wisdom or Constitution. If she wants to endure, if she wants to be there for her friends, she would almost be a tank in this regard then, actually. Because she would have hit points and a rather high defense. So let's do this. Let's put from Immigrant that one into Constitution. We know for sure that Wisdom gets bumped by one uh, from a Counselor. And then we get a one in one other non-Wisdom score. And I think that's going to be Charisma. Now, what we can do is at level 2, 4, and 6, we have some options. And those options... Up, 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 almost there. Come on. Come on. There we go. At 2, 4, and 6, you can take either two minor feats or one major feat. Uh, some of the uh, the more uh, basic uh, minor feats increase one ability score by one point. If we want to go hard into Charisma, by level 4, she could be at maximum Charisma. That would boost her defense. That would boost her ability uh, to, uh, to uh, be able to do these tricks. Um, so we could give her just all ability score bumps. We'll take a look if she, if maybe we want some extra skill training and extra profi uh, proficiency or expertise. But let's, we'll take a quick look at some more advanced feats that are minor. And we can take a quick look at our major. Reroll three attacks, saving throws, or ability checks per day. Um, ambush enemies, block melee attacks, increase your maximum hit points. Shoot multiple opponents are lined up. Do damage to opponents when tripping or shoving. Uh, get various advantages using a favorite weapon or hit multiple opponents with one giant swing. None of those in summary sound like her. So let's take a look at these other ones. Oh, provides a well-trained pet. Uh, Animal Whisperer, because she does have a, uh, a favorite pet. And in fact, what will that do? Um... You form a special bond with your pets and are good with animals. You gain advantage on ability checks made to influence animals. You can train a tiny to large-sized animals to perform a variety of behaviors at your command. Fetch objects, search for specific objects, sense, sounds, or other stimuli. Uh, deliver an object to a location. 
Uh, raise an alarm. All right. So I think Animal Whisperer is going to be uh, is going to be one of those. Now if we have we do have an odd uh, an odd number here. So what we could even do is say, all right, level two. Why don't we take Animal Whisperer plus uh, Wisdom plus one, and that will raise our Wisdom to fourteen. She might have a pet bug. Bugs or animals? Offhand attacks, uh, help others recover hit points in combat. Uh, that could be important. Let's look at Battlefield Medic. She does uh, She does enjoy being around her friends. Um, when using a first aid kit to stabilize someone, that person also recovers one hit point as an action you can... Use a first aid kit to treat a conscious person adjacent to you. Make a DC 10 intelligence medicine check. So we're not the most intelligent. But it is a 10. I don't have survival. E. Oh, global contacts could be interesting. Have friends all over the world. Uh, we we are an immigrant, and this could also open up. Um, wherever you travel, you can call on a friend for favors, such as a ride, translation, food, and lodging. Uh, so this would make us very friendly. You gain advantage on wisdom streetwise checks by calling a friend asking for tips. So while we're, we don't have streetwise, we have other people who can still let us roll twice and keep the highest. You can borrow up to three items with a price level of three or less per month from your local friend. Be the type of hero who returns what you borrow. So global contacts could be interesting. Oh, Renaissance thinking. Swap int and whiz modifiers for ability checks. That could combo with the battlefield medic then, as that could let us use wisdom for that. Although, a part of me is really thinking for our last... For our last two, what if we just went hard into charisma and we just boost charisma to 20? I'm I'm really feeling like that is going to be our way forward. Um Especially if we want to... Hmm. You know what? Let's, let's do this. We're good with people. We're good with animals. We have an animal to help us and, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, train and do other things here. Let's put our last two. We're going to go Charisma plus two... Then we're going to go Charisma plus two. We're going to bring our Charisma to level 20. We have a very charming uh, person here. And now with that, we can calculate a lot of our other numbers. So Strength is minus one. Our Save is minus one. Uh, dexterity is a plus two, which is going to give us a plus five on our Save. 
Con is a plus two, which is also going to give us a plus two save. Wisdom will be the same. Intelligence is plus zero and plus zero. Charisma is plus five plus eight. All right, with our strength, that is going to be athletics. That is going to come over here. Intelligence is plus zero. So that goes there, 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 there. Social sciences, however, is a plus three. Since we do have training. Dexterity is a plus two. I am, apparently I'm not, there we go, control V. Constitution, there's only the one skill there for that. Wisdom is a plus two. That goes there, that goes there, that goes there. And there. However, insight, we get double proficiency. That's six plus two. We have a plus eight in insight. Then charisma. Look at these plus fives. Actually, just the one plus five because we're untrained in deception. And then we get this wonderful eight to persuasion, performance, and intimidation. That also means for defense, our defense is 10, plus proficiency is 3, plus charisma, which is 5. Uh, and so we're already at 18, plus 1 if, we're, if we have our, our poking stick. Our defense is 19. So despite uh, the fact that you know we're we're still a young adult, we are the like we're the the mom of the group. We know that our constitution is two. So this is going to be five times seven is thirty five plus ten. We have forty five hit points. Which I believe is the most. Yeah, 39 and 40. So we have 45 hit points with a 19 defense versus a 17 and a 16. Uh, so we are tough. <laughs> then what else am I... Oh, our uh, trick DC is 8 plus charisma plus proficiency so 8 plus 8 is a DC of 16 <laughs> excellent and now uh, the final thing to do is to take a look at the tricks available to us as a duelist and um and choose what we want. Let's go back to Duelist real quick. Real quick like. When you hit with a melee attack, you can attempt to disarm your opponent. Roll one influence die and add the result to the damage dealt. In addition, the target must make a strength saving throw against your trick DC. Disarming, flesh A. So we're not the best at fighting. Dexterity is a little, it's a little low. Um, so relying on a hit, mm, 
but our DC is is uh, is uh, is going to be difficult to overcome. That's the damage. Reduce, especially with as many hit points as tough. This is gonna this is gonna provide a good return on our character. So I think parry. When an opponent misses you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to expend an influence and make a melee attack against the opponent. <laughs> now, in this case, we might uh, we might also trade for quantity of attacks, even though we're not the best. Repost might be good for her because we have a high defense. We would actually get to use that. That uh, we'd get to use that more. When you hit with a melee attack, you can attempt to trip your opponent, roll one influence, and add the result to the damage dealt. Must make a strength saving throw against your trick DC. So in this case, I think... Ooh, do we have... A, we have an attacker. She's not the best at attacking, but overcoming her attacks, because we're just constantly just poke, 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 poke. This would also help her stand out against our more defensive duelist. Now, he'll hit... 5% more than she would. Um, so maybe, yeah, I think on her tricks, parry for sure, it, or I'm sorry, um, wait, was it parry? Reduce the damage. Oh yeah, she's going to get a really good return on parry. This for sure is one of her tricks. But I think we can actually go for the attacking uh, more uh, the attacking ones here and this will provide the two of them a very interesting dynamic <laughs> she doesn't want to be attacked but if you attack her um, then you're going to get it And this might create a very interesting bond between our two duelists as well. Let's see, we get one more. Tripping, repost, parry, and, uh, oh yeah, disarming strike for sure. And of course, all of this, you could say, oh, well, th this is almost like uh, how she might uh, debate people or talk people down as well. There's a very good chance that she would have banter during combat. And as a GM, if someone brought this character uh, to the table for the story, I would very much allow for this to happen and see what she can see what she can do in the midst of combat. And while we do have two duelists, we have two different duelists so that they're really not stepping on each other's toes. And it will help them create a wonderful dynamic inside of the party. I almost wonder, uh, I almost wonder if th these two could be brother and sister. Need this. There we go. <laughs> All right, now real, real quick, like we're gonna go back to uh, the. Do, 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 do. In character creation, uh, because I had brought up the topic of languages. And this one in particular gets a bonus language. Let's 
Stop, stop blinking. Oh my gosh. Uh, you choose two languages at the start. A native language you grew up with and one you learned later. So she'll get... Uh, so she'll get uh, three. So that could be uh, something like uh, native, other, and adopted language. The others will get native and other, native and other, as far as their languages. Now the details. Oh well, what is the what is uh, the properties of the rapier? What's the plus to hit? I mean, this is based off of dex. You could you could do it off of strength, but it has finesse, like you would be used to in D and D. Um, you know, what's the penetration value, etc. I'm not worried about the minutia of that. That's not as important as discovering who our character is here, and we have done that. Now initiative. Oh my gosh, she is going to be. Uh, she doesn't want to fight, but if she does, she has a plus seven. Remember, we get to add charisma to our dexterity when we're determining our initiative. And her passive perception is going to be a 12. We'll give her an inspiration. And I believe we, uh, say for the details of the weapons, we have a completed character here. She has motivation. She has an understanding. You, if I handed this character to you, you would be able to figure out how to how to play her, how to get inside her mind and adapt in combat, or to work with other members of the team. And that is really what's most important. Oh, you know what though? The, we do need to determine. We do need to determine her pet. Um, let's go to that real quick. It might be the same as the hunter, at least by broad classification. And if we do that, uh, Belladonna, you rolled for the last one. Let me double check that feat. And, uh, this might be, this might be yours to, uh, roll for as well. We'll see what happens. Is she a bug whisperer? Maybe. This could be a fantasy world where, uh, where she's friends with, um... A giant fire beetle. That would be very interesting. A giant fire beetle as a pet. This was Animal Whisperer. With your pets and are good with animals, you gain advantage on ability checks made to influence. You can train a tiny to large size animal to perform a variety of behaviors. Animal stat block is that of the average member of its species. If the pet dies, you can train a new pet in 30 days. The actions of the animal outside of the specified behaviors are always at the GM's discretion. All right, so this... If you have a class talent that grants a special animal companion, this feat can both apply to that animal and any others you may choose to train. So the, the hunter is going to be a little bit different, meaning that our pet would be something more along the lines of uh, here in animals. A mostly harmless animal. Uh, venomous bug, a bird of prey, dog, mule, pig, a giant sewer rat, a venomous snake, an alligator, a camel, elk, horse, constrictor. Well, let's see. Um, if we go off of animals, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. There are 34. Oh, wait, she can't be friends with a moose, unfortunately. Uh, or a killer whale. So, I take that back. Hold on. We can't be friends with a shark or a rhinoceros. 
Ah, uh, GM discretion. So we can't be friends with the great cat. All right, swarm of insects is the uh, swarm of insects is the final one here. So let's count back. We have. Uh, oh wait, we can't be friends with a bull either. All right, so we have swarm of insects, black bear, ape. Oh, we can't be friends with a wolf. Uh, vermin, bats, alligator, giant sewer rat, venomous snake, pig, mule, so there's ten, dog, bird of prey, Venomous bug, mostly harmless animal, and a goat. All right, we have uh, we have fifteen. It looks like. Uh, so do this. Uh, it actually might go up if we wanted to count the amphibious, aquatic, uh, as uh, as those. So that might just be a d twenty. Uh, Wolf Queen Belladonna. Let's determine the pet for this uh, character with a d20 roll. One d20, and we'll count tiny through medium creatures up from the number that you roll. All right, we don't have Belladonna. Maybe uh, GMV, can I get a 1d20 roll? I need to know the type of pet we have. I don't have... Oh, all right. 1d20, Belladonna. 1d20, please. Eleven. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. We have a <laughs> we have a bird of prey. Uh, does she, does she and our thief? Although I guess it technically would have been more if it was a variant. Did I, did I count this correctly? Cause let's see. It, it could be bird of prey still. Otherwise I was counting uh, on the D20 cause we can go up to 21 technically. I was counting these, but I didn't count all of the variants in venomous bug. Um... That might end up just being its own roll. Although, do we still have a, an 11? Hold on. We'll stick with the 11. Let's see what we have. We have a goat. A mostly harmless animal. A MHA. A venomous bug. Yeah, you know what? Let, well. Then we have a bird of prey. Dog, mule, pig. Uh, a rodent of unusual size. A venomous snake. An alligator. We can't have a camel. 
No elk, no horse, no constrictor. We can have a swarm of bats. We can have a swarm of vermin. We cannot have a wolf. We can have an ape. We can have a black bear. Hi, coffee cat. No bull. Uh, we can have a swarm of insects. No great cat, no giant octopus, a pulpo gigante. Uh, we can have a swarm of flying insects. Swarm of flying insects. No brown bear. No hippo, rhino, shark, giant constrictor. Uh, we can have a swarm of piranha, I suppose. Swarm of venomous snakes. Although, I don't know if a swarm would necessarily count, would it? I guess that might mean that she always has the snakes following her around and she just talks to one and it goes back and tells the others. Elephant, killer whale, moose. Okay, so we can't have any of those. One, two, three, four. All right. If we go by just a size category for a thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That is 18. So that would be a D20 roll in other circumstances and we would, uh, and we would ignore the 19 and 20. Uh, so in this case, we got a number below it, which would be 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. A swarm of bats uh, apparently is her pet. Unless I'm totally misinterpreting this uh, this minor feat. Um, Still, it might be fun, or if we just have to say she has a pet bat, that's fine. She has one pet bat, and the pet bat can do something. Um, I don't know. Can we put that in the notes? Kind of. All right. There's at least a note about that. Let me scroll back up. I'm going to read this one last time. Oh, we can get large-sized animals also. I was completely off. All right. I might need to have a reroll, but I got to get up and take a break. So never mind. This could be a large also. Uh, so we'll see what a Belladonna's roll might mean for that. I was off. It, it doesn't stop at medium. This is tiny to large. You can train a tiny, large-sized animal to perform a variety of behaviors. So it, it might just be a uh, stat block is that of an average member of its species. So there's the singular ones that would be mostly harmless out of a swarm. We'd have to drop the swarm, add in large animals. I'll do the math in the meantime, but let's get up and take a break and we'll fix this up and go from there. I'll be back in five to ten minutes. Uh, hold on tight. We'll get this character saved, open up another character sheet, and continue the workshop. <laughs> 